So we are live. This is Pietri Diamant. Uh, most of you know me from She's Connected SA. I've changed my platform. I am the founder of Earth Alive 365 now. I'm also an awareness artist for endangered species. And today we are celebrating India and India's animals, their stray animals, the dogs in specific. And I'm speaking to Pamela Tosh. Um, a South African who is traveling and has been traveling to India back and forth during the past four, it's four, five years, four years. Yeah. Uh, four years. So pa Pamela, hi, welcome on Petri Diamant and Earth Life 365. Do you want to take a minute and just introduce yourself? Thank you so much, Petro, for having me here this evening. Um, I've been traveling to India since 2013 and I first got involved on the streets um, doing foot care and first aid and personal hygiene with sadhus and babas and the poor people and by involving myself in street at street level um, I started to notice a lot of the environmental and social issues which um, over the years has become my calling to try and help and serve wherever I can can so um i'm here appealing on behalf of the animals that i've been serving over the last couple of years um i first just when i went to goa and i lived on the beach for a couple of months and uh, i actually ended up adopting and moving one of the strays off the beach to and i've seen a lot of tourists and foreigners do the same thing over the years and appealing for help and funds to save the animals and so many organizations and a lot of women especially women um, just dedicating so much of the year and their time to uh, leaving their own and, and helping the animals yeah you know I, I i find it so beautiful because it usually is people from abroad or people from other countries that you know either come to africa or we go to india or we travel we go somewhere and we see something um, that has to be done and we you know we're just driven you know we were talking about the call you know there's a call and we hear it yeah. and we answer it and we just go right that's right so, yeah so i've been you know especially in the last three weeks there's been so many messages coming to me with regards to um, animal cruelty the violence against animals on this planet and specifically you know what i've seen on social media um which was horrible it was horrible right because nobody should see this this shouldn't be happening but was the violence happening um on stray animals dogs cats you know animals that are on the street and it's really really violent it really is very violent and when i went to india you know there was i mean i you know i i'm, I'm an observer i observe things so and then i i kind of like i zoom in and i really want to get to know the nitty-gritty of it you know so there is a huge problem and it's not just in india it's all over the world um mm. what is happening the thing is the thing is you know if we look at the st statistics at the moment um petro to how many humans are getting bitten by these strays that they say they want to cull. They want to cull the harmful ones or the ones that are doing um, If we look at the opposite side of the spectrum and how many humans, again, are actually abusing animals in the And when I was in Derudun, which, uh, you know, unfortunately, we don't have Melikur with us as we were supposed to have this evening from welfare representing the northern region of in india where this problem is happening um you know i i went for a walk in the park and i saw these men with massive sticks hitting sleeping dogs mm -hmm. and this dog jumped out of i, I got the and I just couldn't believe that this was happening right in front of my eyes in a place that was supposed to be sacred i mean really mm -hmm. what would gandhi knew what yeah. was going on yeah. you know love all animals and we are all one and we preach this all the time and the yoga fraternity are amongst all of this but nobody is actually doing anything yeah that's true and 
and I know that we spoke this morning um, and I, I said to you that I was online and somebody had pulled a card and it was actually the dark card and it was so fitting because dog spelled backwards is God you know yeah it's sacred and what these dogs will be loyal to humans dogs yeah. Their masters right up until, you know, even yeah. if they're abused, they will still look at you with loving eyes. Yeah, yeah. So the culling that's going to take place, that's going to be in six months time. That's basically what they're they're saying. In six months time, they're going to be culling these animals to get them. No, off. no. Let for you quickly. OK, and this is where we need to be very, very careful. They want to remove all the strays from the streets hmm. and they want if they are dangerous ones that they will issue that culling notice and that the, the dangerous dogs will be killed mm. but shelters to accommodate these dogs i know because i've done the research the two groups that are working in rishikesh out of no clinic space no shelter space if there is a rescue the rescue is done on the street and the rescues are on the street in Derudun too, they have not yet built their shelter. And if you look at the space that that shelter has to accommodate in relation to which they are per square meterage, however big you want to measure that space, of course there are not enough shelters for these animals. They are wild and they space to roam. They are traveling in packs. They are going to be territorial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. And I've also seen that I've seen them traveling in packs, you know, I've seen them like in their, you know, in that mode, um, especially when we were in Manali, and it's it's just a different, a different um, energy to that. And there definitely is a wildness and a dangerous aspect to that, you know. Um, so Pamela, you know, like, I mean, so how, how, you know, I mean, what, what are we asking for? We're asking for people to get involved, right? we need to know how many people there are out there because they're out there and if we form a collaboration or a union or a one voice mm. then that is going to get us further at the end of the day yeah. and each of organizations or individual persons has a skill when put together forms a unified huge department of any kind of would need to fill whether it be just from the sterilizations all the way through to just patching up a wound or giving a dog medication or yeah. after the animal you know and or to play with it and take it for a walk um if we do need to keep these animals in confinement there's so many to look at um so there's going to be uh, you know, perhaps some need for professionals in the field to come forward as well as vets. Um, you know, what they're saying is that each shelter should have its own dispensary. But now what mm -hmm. I know is in Rishikesh, no animal hospitals or dispensaries, but absolutely no shelters. Now, why is that? Yeah. They yeah. expect the person who's seen to take it to the hospital and take it home and look after it on its own. But these animals are wild. We can't expect our tourists and our to actually want to move these animals or put their, their hands on animals that have really bad skin diseases. So there's so many things. And if we are going to get these shelters, how then do we remove the dogs from the streets? It has to be done in a humane way. Yeah, so I think our conversation, our conversation was really is just to start the conversation, and this is basically an invite. So we will be sharing this video, um, and we're inviting you to make contact with with Pamela or with myself or with Dune um, Animal Welfare. Um, prefer me, pa Pamela? Do you prefer for them to to go through you? I think because we're having the conversation, we are basically putting the invite out, right? Yes, I think uh, I'm happy to facilitate and project manage the collection of resources. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think I'll need to also apply myself to how how we go do that because I have been looking online. The Animal Welfare India Society have put together what they need for shelters, yeah. um, and it could even come down to building and construction at the end of the day. Um, 
So also looking at that and seeing what we do need. Um, and also asking the NGOs that have registered to unite under one front and actually speak to the state or the ministers in Northern region to find out what is being done to allocate land, what is being done to build, and what are their plans in the next six months to complete these buildings. And then of course, how to put people in them that actually know what they're doing to be able to run these places. Yeah, yes, of course. You know, you want complete transparency. You want transparency. We want to plan. We want to see where the change is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, whoever has been put in charge are actually going to deliver on their word. Right? The thing is, it is an impossible task. Hmm. And the state has said that if you don't do it, you're going against a court order. Hmm. So they're being serious within their own culture and, and, you know, I kind of wonder as well when I'm still talking about culture and religion, they have very strict morals and principles that say you can't actually kill any animals, but they are abusive people that are taken to their own hands anyway. So we do also need to put some kind of directive out saying that, again, to combat the abuse that this might lead to, we have strict uh, uh, laws in place that say people cannot kill animals and that there will be legal repercussions if private killing does start happening. Yeah, yeah I think, you know, when it comes to um, poorer areas, you know, where there's, where, where, where there's real serious poverty, um, you know, it does get very difficult, you know, because you can be very religious, very spiritual, um, but if your body and your mental body and your health is suffering from that, then you're not acting from a place uh, from a very healthy, um, what I call it is a very healthy, loving uh, place, you know, and then that is where we then sort of the imbalance comes in where we forget um, the God within everything and the sacredness and, and, you know, in the lives of the, the, the animals and the people around us. So, you know, yeah. India, India to me, I mean, it's always, I remember the first time I went to India, you know, I was on a mission. I was going to go and meet this Bollywood producer and I was going to, you know, and then when I got there and I landed and my feet touched the ground, the first thing I felt was this is home. This is home. The second thought that came to me was there is so much work to be done. Yeah. You know, and I saw that. I saw that on the streets. I saw that every time I passed somebody, I saw the beauty in it as well. And I was told not to go to the slums, but I went there anyway because I wanted to see. I wanted to see what people live in. I wanted to see how they live. I wanted to see what the animals are going through, you know. And I saw animals on the side of the road and people were, Petra, don't go there, don't touch them, don't look at them, you know. And I was like, you know, and that was yeah. good for me. Because, I think yeah. in India does overwhelm the senses. Mm -hmm. That reason uh, a lot of us can actually remove ourselves slightly and observe what's happening around us for the first time. Yeah. We actually touch from the norm, which is whatever the West and the West culture has induced us into over the years. So um, this is something entirely different. And uh, it's also a feeling of being connected to something much older than we can ever imagine. The culture is just so deep rooted in um, in the past and, and the traditions are still there everywhere through the temples and I think in the West we might have lost that connection to what God is, you know, yeah. bringing us back again to the animals and um, how we need to remember that if we don't appreciate that connection with God, with our environment, with the animals and with each other, we're losing our compassion and we're not loving each other enough, yeah. you know, and we need to come back to ourselves as the individuals, give ourselves that love and forgiveness and actually try and appreciate ourselves. And then we need to extend that out to our community and our environment. And we, I live in that karma yoga now, you know, that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, to be of service, to, to act in purpose, um, to be kind, compassionate, loving, you know, to actually take care. And, I'm, you know, and, and, and this is where it comes in, you know, um, 
I know that there are going to be people listening to this that are, that are stuck in their nine to five jobs. And there are people that are going to be listening to this and they want to make a difference, but they don't know where to go to and they don't know what to do and they don't know how to do it. Or maybe they've got fear, you know, of actually taking that leap of faith and actually going over and helping. But there is so much work to do. So, and there's, you know, if one person chooses one thing, or just one other person or one animal or, you know, whatever it is that you feel called to do, we feel like the change needs to happen where there should be shift. Yeah. Um, Listen, nothing is instantaneous, you know, and we need yeah. to be realistic about yeah. um, what we expect of ourselves. Yeah. Um, in my process and my transformation over the last five years, I've also need to, um, you know, reassess every once and make sure that I'm being honest with myself. Yes. Um, so as much as, as what someone like myself might think, oh, the people in the world, they are serving a purpose and they must uplift themselves in that situation first because the happiness starts within mm. and it's about planting. Yeah. Bring the seed and it's not manifesting from there you know um I'm, I'm 43 now i've left my 19 year old daughter back in south africa and it's really difficult for me to you know break those ties but um i do also see on the other side of the spectrum that i would like to have a legacy for my children and i think we need to come back to that as well mm -hmm. that legacies can be passed down to our children and they can be inspired but should also learn to travel because i do believe that our youth at the moment are very very stuck you know when i look at what my daughter is feeling being stuck in in university or something that she's not necessarily compelled or enjoying um i think our youth need to mobilize themselves and get traveling and start becoming a voice yeah. of the future yes 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 so getting back to what's happening in india is there a march tomorrow sorry can you repeat is, that is there a march tomorrow i think there's a march tomorrow for animals right in india that there's a march to yes uh, so I, I met Milikur and the Dune Animal Welfare team a few months back. I went to the inauguration of the medicine bank held in Derudun. Millie is a young founder and she's been actively working on the streets throughout her teenagehood. And I've been um, given land and the building will progress in August for the shelter there. Um, they work and people can have a look and see what the rescue work is um, on the Facebook page and uh, so they've arranged much but unfortunately I don't know too much about it yeah. um, and I do feel yeah. that as the weeks progress we will of course be joining more, more forces there will be other online petitions protests and marches happening in many different areas mm -hmm. I think it's important that the schools and Shikesh, any other yoga schools really do encompass the yoga philosophy yes. and actually get everybody together and you know let's love our planet on it and speak out for the dogs please yeah yeah please please you know there's so much work to do so um petitions going out marches happening um buildings that need to go up money funding that's required skills that are required volunteers that are required people that are willing to actually go over and help and assist you know and then very important in a very non-judgmental way because nobody's here to save anybody. We're here to create together and make a difference together, you know, have a real impact. And we can only do that through, through true love and compassion, understanding. Maybe, maybe this is why I'm here and I feel very blessed and grateful to be able to say this, that I've been practicing karma yoga and karma yoga is love in action without any expectation of reward and if you can understand that and you can truly be honest and walk in that then yeah come and help please yes beautiful beautiful Helena, so um we're going to be posting and i think we we should have another conversation but i think we can share this video and really just invite people to get involved you know that's really the we're the invitation at the moment for people to get involved um so 
Pamela Tosh from Indie Pam. Uh, that's how you can get a hold of her. She is on Facebook. Um, if you can't get a hold of her, you can contact me, Pietru Diamant. So that's www.pietru, P E T R O, Diamant, um, D I A M A N T, dot com. Okay, or Earth Alive 365. Are online and we will answer your call. We will receive your messages. And if you want to go over to India and you want to work with Dune Animal Welfare or you want to go and help another animal organization that's out there doing the same work or help unite everyone, um, then do so. You know, in the end of the day, it is about education. It's about bringing people together. It's about celebrating hearts. I'm big very big on celebrating hearts celebrating lives celebrating species celebrating this earth and life on earth um so that's my thing you know and this is how we celebrate we we take inspired action to go out there get involved participate you know have impact and then um whoosh whoosh uplift things and you know yay thank yeah. you so thank you so much yeah, so I, is there an email? Do you want to give your email address that people can contact you via your email address? I think yes. you should include it in the link below as well. Okay, yeah, please, people can uh, send me an email on Pamela, P A M E L A, at IndiePam, I N D I P A M dot com. Yeah, karma means action. Beautiful. Yes, yeah, statement as well. What we do and who we touch has a rippling effect. Yeah. You know, just. Yeah. embrace love yeah. so i do want to say you have mentioned we were supposed to have two more callers um or two more people in on the in on the call today and uh we couldn't get them online you know i think that they're busy with work and um just you know things happen so once we have that information we'll be posting it online and you can go and and have a look at it um and I really, really, you know, if you are stuck and you really feel like, you know, you have a bigger calling and that you are somebody that really can can create change and, and be part of something amazing, um, then go out there and do it, you know, um, and go and love these beautiful animals, these beautiful dogs, these God beings, loyal friends of ours. And um, let's get them off the street. Let's get these shelters built. And uh, let's do the yoga, let's do the education, let's love each other and um, yeah, make contact with us. Pamela, I have to run. So I'm sure we'll be speaking uh, to each other again. Thank you very much. Yeah, have a beautiful day. <laughs> Namaste. Bye. -bye. Bye. Namaste. <laughs> Bye.